Hi, I'm Kyle with Midas, and right now I'm going to go through the preferences page as part of our Midas CDMU class online. So on the Pro 2, to navigate to the preferences page, use the screen access buttons in the middle and hit it twice for preferences. At the top, you have a roll of tabs, configuration, show, user, linking, and delay compensation. These are where you kind of set the desk up to work for you and your first bit of operational stuff on the console. So on the left hand side you have sync source. What this determines is where the clock source is coming from. If I don't have any other console but the Midas Pro 2 and an I.O. box on stage, this will be the master console. If I put another console into this, say front of house and a monitor console, then I'll have to distinguish which desk is going to be my master and which des desk is going to be my slave. Right here is where I would choose any of the sync source. If my monitor desk was the master desk and I had two generic AS50 cables coming in here, the primary and the secondary drop down menu right here would determine where I'm getting my clock source from. Since this is the master desk, this should be chose as front of house word clock, which is usually the default setting. Right here is where I would choose master and or slave. This is where clock is being generated. So since this is my only desk in the system right now, master is selected and front of house word clock is selected as well. DSP timeout. This is kind of an interesting function. If the desk would lose control on the surface, this is how long it would take to the DSP timed out or stopped working after you lost control or went to the shutdown procedure. You can have it checked to infinite and you, or you could set it to a certain second amount. On the Pro 3, 6, and 9, and this is a little different because the DSP is a separate unit outside. So if I lost power at my I.O. box, this would pass the last signal until I lost power at the front of house surface. Foot switch function, on the back of this console you have two foot switch inputs and those can be chosen for what they do here. You can use one as a tap tempo or a, ski, uh, a scene skip or the same with the second foot switch. You can switch to the next scene or use it as a tap tempo. Fan speed, so this is the internal bulkhead fan that runs across the middle of the chassis that brings cool air across the PCBs. The vents for those are right underneath and you can feel the air flowing through when the fan's on. The default setting is medium. Um, we really don't experience any kind of issues with heat related problems. People more or less really want to turn off the bulkhead fan for critical listening or if there are people sitting really close to a quiet event at your desk, you can turn off the fan internally. Turning off the bulkhead fan is not recommended, as it says in the pop-up screen, but you can. At the top of the screen, you have 431 and 231 mic splitter inputs. These allow you to choose which side of the DL431 or DL231 you're splitting between two consoles. One will be the A side network, and the other side at the other console will be the B network. Time and date. This one's really important. Please set your time and date when you get your console. This will keep track of your show files when you last saved, when you exported them to your USB drive, and it also helps our care team decide when things happened internally in the console because log files are being made continuously. Right below that, this is a nice one-click function. So if I was capturing my show for a virtual sound check, I could go in and switch this over in the GUI to be automatically everything back to tape return so I could play back and start mixing my show without the band on stage. The little blue buttons beneath it enable all the tape returns when that's selected or it disables them all and then normal is the normal I.O. on stage. Right below that is these reset defaults. Restore, restore default preferences and restore default globals. What this does is allow you to get the desk back to factory default zero. Um, it'll reset all the preferences to the standard and it will also reset all the global I.O. setup and preferences that you've already put into your show file back to the original settings of when the console was new.
The remote control server is a server that's built in for the wireless network that you plug into the back through the Ethernet control port. All you would do is hook up a router through the Ethernet control port and adjust your IP address here to be nine numbers above on the last octet from whatever the static is of the IP of the router that you're using. With the Mixtinder app, you would connect to the router in the Ethernet control port, put in the IP address that you see on the server, and then press connect after you've started the remote control server here and see the active designation. Also, the most important thing on the page, I think, is the version firmware that your Pro 2 is currently on. Please check on MidasConsoles.com on the product page for the Pro 2 to make sure that your console is on the most current firmware.